We really care what the Bible says. We want you to prove all things. You can call him in and ask us the question on the truth with proof. Truth, truth with, with proof. proof. With your host, host Travis, Travis Thomas. Thomas. You can, you can call, call in with a spiritual, spiritual question and get, get a Bible answer. answer. We, we want to prove all things. First Thessalonians 5, 21. All right, thanks for joining in with me tonight on Truth With Proof. I want to just do a quick mic check to make sure I'm coming across. All right. That was still in the intro. There is a lag in the YouTube stream as far as it being behind a little bit. But I appreciate you guys joining in with me on Truth With Proof tonight. I'm going to try to get back on my regular schedule. I had some things come up. Let me check it one more time now that I'm talking. All right. Yep. All right. I'm coming across. Everyone should be able to hear me. So, again, I appreciate you for taking your time out to watch this either later or present tense as in now. This is a live. This is a live call-in show where you actually can take part. And when I get my phone over here in a second, we're going to talk about several things tonight. And we have been, I have been talking to individuals on YouTube, in the YouTube chat, and also individuals on Facebook. Had one particular guy, we're going to look at one of his, his questions, his comments. I'm not going to argue with you on Facebook. These individuals who live out in California, these individuals who live in another state, you're not local. You, we're not going to drive and meet, and I'm not going to argue with you on Facebook. I do this. See, I, see earlier, he's going to argue, and I'm at my daughter's, both of them, basketball game. I ain't got time. I'm not going to argue. Tonight, I've set aside time to discuss and reason, and we can make some good uh, argumentation from the scriptures. We can discuss, not in the fashion that a lot of people just think you're arguing and it's without cause. We want to have dialogue back and forth, and we want to look at the Bible. And I got up here where Paul says, but, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. I am set for the defense. Friends, Paul the apostle was set, ready to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what I'm trying to do. Am I perfect? No. Am I the smartest preacher there is? No. Can people call in and I won't know their answers? Well, sure. Because I'm a human. All right. I have a secular job and three children and a full-time job. I don't claim to know it all. But I am set for the defense of the gospel. We can, you know, the other night in a Wednesday night Bible study, a brother had brought up a subject. I'd never heard of it presented or asked. And I said, let's stop. After a little bit, I was like, let's stop right there and let's go home and all of us see what the good book says. See, the good book has what we need to go to heaven. And Paul was set to defend the gospel. And today these people are just saying things that are not in the gospel. They're just saying, except Jesus Christ. They're saying, hey, I got on this right here in, in Cookville. Listen to this. Listen to... This individual, pull it up, right here it is. In no time, no time, listen to this. This didn't take but 30 seconds you listen to these guys. What I'm about to share with you, I believe God dropped it straight in my heart from heaven. I mean, I'd never read or said this, but this just came to me. And so my title was going to... See? I mean, really? You're on truth with proof tonight. And if this guy calls in who just gets a message from God, just dropped it in, emailed it to him, right? Just dropped it in. But why didn't you get a Oh, you probably did get a message. That's why you can't, Christians, have a difficult time, very difficult, some of them you can't, try to convince people to follow the Bible because they don't want to follow the Bible because they get their own uh, letter, they get their own message from God, and they don't, they're not going to defend the gospel because they just get this stuff out of thin air. You know, this individual here, he sure would not obey Jesus and teach what Jesus taught on Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That individual, Bobby at Life Church, isn't going to teach that. 
He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Notice this, friends. Now, do I need to make this bigger? I hope you can see this if you're watching it on your phone. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. This individual doesn't teach that. You know, so maybe you're watching this and you hadn't watched it much. Well, you, this is called truth with proof. And I do everything. I run the computer. I run the PowerPoint. I run the mic, the intro, the lights, the program. And I am not supported and don't want to be supported by any congregation or group of elders. That's right, friends. Why do you want to be like that? Well, because, you know, if I talk about marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and someone uh, that I'm associated with doesn't like it, they can throw a fit about it because I, I, don't, want, I don't mention I, I, I'm supported by the Lord and myself, and I'm teaching the truth, and I don't have to worry about all of this church politics. I don't have to worry about some uh, preacher or some elder getting mad at me, and if they don't ask me to come and speak at a congregation, that's on them. Because I got truth with proof, and if you, some of you guys are sharing it, I appreciate it and liking it, but tonight we are on truth. That is God's word. Notice right here. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. God's word is true. Now, uh, we want to prove all things. You know, this guy got a revelation from God. You didn't get a revelation from God. The revelation we got from God is right here in your hands. If you are watching this, this is a live Bible study program. That means get your Bible out and let's discuss things in the Bible. But yet denominations, they're not in the Bible. They're not doing things within the Bible and they're doing some things, but you can drink a little poison as well and you still end up dead. And I want to go through a little bit of things before we get going into the lesson. Um, I want to discuss, you know, Easter's coming up. Where's the authority to have a special service for Easter? A lot of people are, are saying, hey, you know, they just come up with all kinds of stuff saying that uh, they can see that taught in the Bible when we see the first day of the week uh, is when the disciples came together. But look at Colossians 3.17. I went 7. But look at this. It comes down to authority. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the authority? Where is the authority to teach faith alone? Where is the authority that you can be saved without being immersed in water for the remission of your sins? Where is the authority that you can use musical instruments, that you can have female pastors, that you can just do whatever you want to do? Well, yeah, you can, but you're going to be judged by the Word of God. It's going to judge me. It's going to judge you. And Paul says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name, the authority of our Lord. Do you not love the Lord? See, I love the Lord so much, I want to do things according to His name, meaning His authority and what He has prescribed in His New Testament, friends. And that's what I hope you want to do as well. I want you to do that as well. So as we look here, I want to get through a couple of things right here, some upcoming events. Well, tonight we're going to look at the whole counsel of God. Did you know the whole counsel of God will get you in trouble? It will. You know, there, look, look at this right here. This right here, in the Lord's Church, we don't have creed books. We don't have creed books. We say our creed is the Bible. Now, we have some smart gospel preachers. We have some very intelligent preachers, men and women. We have Bible school teachers, and we have very intelligent elders, and we have, uh, we have material written from them. But I want you to look. Maybe you've seen these, these books. You know the whole counsel of God can get you in trouble? Did you know that? Even in the Lord's church, if you preach the whole counsel of God in some places, you'll be in trouble. And that's a fact. I got here a little booklet by Paul Sane. It's a ready reference. It has basically main topics that you would talk about. You know, you could uh, do the crown of life, creation, the church and works. and 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 there was a lesson in here called discipline. Do you realize that when you start preaching the truth, that sometimes you will be lonely? Did you know that? You'll be lonely in the physical sense that people that you may assemble with, 
uh, people who you have worshipped with, they will turn on you. That that can happen, friends. I preached a lesson out of this. Now that's what's that's what I'm saying. Church, church politics. See, sometimes congregations, a lot of congregations do this. We will pay the congregation will pay for a well-known preacher to come, and you know what they'll preach? They will preach something like, uh, we'll just bring up something, just, you know, they'll, they will come and preach First John 7. You know, they'll come and they'll preach this. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses you from all sin. So, and they will get up and they'll say, see, if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, walking in the light, walking in his word, walking in his teaching, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from sin. So we had to pay a preacher that was big, you know, well-known, he all over the brotherhood, to come and tell us something that we can read and understand for ourselves. What are you getting at, Travis? This is what I'm getting at. But the well-known preacher who will write a book, or since many of them will, why don't they preach on church discipline? Why, why do they not teach on church? See, the point is, years ago, see, the church sets up young preachers. Did you know that? This is, this is so basically, there's a young preacher in a different county, and so he has been going to some areas where they are teaching this renewed earth, and they don't think it's a big deal. Well, he's teaching that. And so now that he's taught it, the church, some in the church, have just cut him off. It's false teaching. But see, they didn't think of it as a big deal when he went in fellowship with these guys who are teaching it. Well, that I don't agree with, and I believe it is false. I believe when we die, we're going to go to Hades, and then eventually you're going to go to heaven and the end. You're going to go to heaven, not earth, okay? But my point is, the church sets up young men. They do. Because this right here says church discipline. And so I preached this at a home congregation where I was basically raised. And after I preached this, pretty much, you know, word for word, right out of the book, I had been asked to come back in two or three years. Two or three years. Now, maybe it's a coincidence. You think it's a coincidence? I don't know. But I know one thing is, if it is, I think it's a joke that the church will give out material to young people who get on zealous, you know, they get fired up, they want to preach the word, and, and, you know, all things. We want to preach all things. And when we preach something that they put out in their foyer, they say, nah, you ain't, nah, that's not, that's not going to fly. See how they set up? Why is that, Travis? That is because a lot of congregations are looking at numbers. They're looking at numbers. See, if you don't preach on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and you don't preach on church discipline, and you don't teach on very hard subjects, everybody's going to be pleased, and you're just going to fill the building up. And that's what some congregations like to do. Now, do I know for a fact this congregation? I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's kind of strange how you can preach on church discipline, and that happened. I'll give you another example. I first started preaching at another congregation. Found out the song leader was in adultery. Yeah. So I came. I said, hey, I can't be preaching here if this guy is getting up singing in adultery. I mean, come on. You know, this, this guy is living in sin. He's not walking in the light. Guess what? Do you think I got to go back there? No, I didn't get to go back there. But you know what happened? Another brother who had been preaching longer found about it, heard about it. He talked to them. The individual did not get to participate. He was in sin, living in sin. And But see, my point is, why did it take the other brother? You know, why did it take someone else who has been preaching and has family, when we say we are people who follow the Bible, we love the Bible, give us the Bible, 
And when you're in some congregations, you give them the Bible and they don't have you back anymore. You see how that goes? All scripture. No, it isn't. Not in some, it's all preachers, all certain family members, all preachers that go to a certain school is, is given by inspiration of God. That is happening in so many congregations, and it's very sad, very sad. Why are you talking about this, Travis? Because this is real. See, we can just talk about these Jews that Paul is dealing with and the, and the Christians are dealing with in the book of Acts. But when I step out my door and I drive down Highway 56, I don't see any synagogues. I don't see any real-life application to it. But what I do see is the things I've talked about because I've been part of it. And that's the short time I've been preaching. And so I say all that. If you are a young person and you want to preach the word, I would encourage you to keep your secular job. You know, I'm at a great congregation. I love the congregation, the leadership, the individuals. But guess what? If I was to preach something very hard and they let me go, what am I going to do? But I got a secular job and I can preach the truth in love and it'll be okay. I'll be saddened. It's already happened to me before, you know, and I'm not going to say how many times in the short time I've been preaching. But if you're a young man, I would encourage you, if you can, keep your secular job so you can preach and you can preach with the zeal and the love and the passion and you don't have to worry about all of this politics because there is going to be that when you wake up and you start preaching and teaching, you put yourself on a platform like this, oh yeah, there will be people probably saying tonight whatever I did was a sin to talk about some of this stuff. This is real life. I mean, Paul talked about this stuff going on. This was real things happening, and it happens all over, all over the world, all over congregations with that. And so I want to encourage young people and, and, and Christians, hey, keep the fight up. You know, keep the fight up. Don't worry about individuals within the church trying to, you know, tell you things that you shouldn't be preaching and teaching on, and they leave the stuff in the foyer, and it, it don't really matter if it's in the foyer. It's in the Word. See, this guy here in church discipline, you know, discipline, he says, why should you withdraw? Why should withdrawal be done? Well, it is to save the guilty one. 1 Corinthians 5, 5. Let's just look there before we... Why should you withdraw yourself from a brother that is, that is walking disorderly? You know, it is because you love them. Look, to deliver such a one into Satan for the destruction of flesh that, you, that, that the spirit may be saved. That the spirit, basically you're withdrawing yourself because you're like, look, brother or sister, you are not walking in the light. You're a rebellious person. And Paul says this and had his uh, father's wife and so he's in sin, and he says to deliver such a one into Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord. Same exact stuff in the Bible, and that's what you get with some of these congregations. You know what you get? You just get, maybe perhaps in some of them, baptism. They say, well, baptism is required. Baptism's in the Bible. But what about the other parts? What about, like, marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and shacking up, and fornication. What about the things that some congregations are filled with, and it's not being preached? And the Lord comes back, that person's in sin. Are you a watcher or a watchman? Are you watching out for souls, Christians? Sadly, so many are not. They are not. You know, when I die, we're going to see what the way that I would say that you know, I tried. I love you enough to try, and sometimes I may come across with a bad attitude. I hope I don't, but I love you enough tonight to set my time aside and try to present the whole counsel of God, friends. So these individuals here, they had like my, I want to give a shout out to some of these individuals. You know, see, uh, some of these individuals here are people that I'm associated with, and I, I appreciate the likes. I do. Is there some things that I could do better? I'm sure there is. But I appreciate every person liking my YouTube video because it encourages me, and I hope that I encourage you. 
Look, the, the brothers and sisters I know that years ago in this county that I live in, I miss you. I want to work with you. I want you to come and do videos with me so we can do Bible studies. All right? But you, you just you need to get right with God and get out of this kind of lukewarmness and start preaching the teaching, the whole counsel of God, friends, if you're doing that. Now, look, you may be. If you're teaching it and preaching it and supporting it, good. If you're not, I, this applies to you just like it applies to me. What's coming up on Truth With Proof? This is what's coming up in the near future, Lord willing. I'm going to have this individual who supposedly is a Christian. He still is. He's unfaithful now. He left the Lord's Church, and he wants to do an interview. I asked him to do an interview, and he said yes. So he went on these guys, these Calvinists, if you know what Calvinist is. They're born in sin. So he went on these depraved people's website, and they are predestined, I guess. So these are special individuals, and they are selected from the foundation of the world, regardless of what they do. They're Calvinists. And they went and basically had this guy talk about his story about why he left the church. But I wanted to interview with him, a gospel preacher. And he said yes. Yeah. So Lord willing, that will be coming up in the near future. I want to discuss as well as this guy, this other individual. This is not the Chad that liked my post. This guy, Chad Donnelly. You know, Chad, you know, I have a lot of friends on Facebook. You know why? I just I just randomly just go around just adding all these friends, hoping that they would see truth with the proof and, and they'll be honest and they'll see something so simple. This is not too complicated. They'll see that they're in a hopefully that however they were saved, supposedly they would say that they've accepted Jesus Christ in their heart. And then they get on truth with proof, and a preacher says, no, you're not saved by accepting Jesus Christ in your heart. That is a, that's a, that's a fake story that man has made up. And I show them repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I show them what the Bible says. See, repent and be baptized. That's what the Bible says. Now, you can be like this guy here. You see his comment? Notice his comment. Uh, current? Yeah, current. Okay. He says, has anyone, anyone who has disagreed with you been the one with the truth or only you? So, basically, has anyone, Travis, who's disagreed with you was right and you were wrong? See, this is the mindset of some people on my Facebook. I don't really know that guy. I really don't. And I'm not going to argue. I just deleted his cold comment after he's wasting my time. I'm trying to watch my daughters play basketball. I'm doing a live call-in program, 7 p.m. Central Time. I tell people that. If you see it, it's on. I make a link because sometimes, you know, I'm busy. Something comes up like I've been. But I make a link. If you see the link, if you subscribe, I don't, I don't ask for no money. I don't want your money. But if you subscribe, it will notify you. And I say that because there's sometimes, you know, you may be willing to watch or you want to watch, and I make a link, and it'll know, it will let you know, you know, if you're not busy and you can, you can watch it live. But this individual, I'm not going to argue with people on Facebook. I'm done with it. I do the live. I set my time. See, the phone number's right here. You see the phone number, 931-267-9095. That is my personal phone number right here is the phone. It is on. All right? You can call in if you agree or disagree on any of the teachings that I present tonight. My friends, you can do that. Okay? But I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you on Facebook. And so has anyone who has disagreed with you been the one with truth? Or is it, see, the, that's the wrong question. Ask. He should ask, is the Bible the truth? It, I mean, if you call in and you say you were saved by faith alone, and I'm showing you in the Bible that you need to repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, see, this individual just wants to argue. See, this is, this is the Word of God. This is the first gospel sermon about the death, burial, and the resurrection, and it was preached by an apostle, and apparently, that doesn't mean anything to you guys, some of y'all. And if it doesn't, then I can't do anything. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you might as well just 
go watch um, Star Wars or something because it doesn't matter if you don't believe what the Bible says, if you don't want to obey the Bible. But I'm looking for people that want to obey the Bible. And we'll go on down and look at the lesson here. So I told that guy, he can call in. You can call in, Chad. Man, just call in. You know? I don't know everything. All right? But I know the plan of salvation. How is someone saved? I know simple things that we should look at. So tonight, notice this with me. It says, all right. Wherefore, I take you by record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Notice what Paul says. I am pure from the blood of all men. Any man that is able to, within my reach, to watch this or I may interact with, I should be willing to ask them to study the Word of God. Do I do that perfect? No. I should. I should have the mindset. I'm working on it. I do from time to time. But I am pure from the blood of all meaning men. I'm not going to hide anything back, though. Like, I, Lord willing, this individual, he's at a soccer game, and he wants to study the Bible. And it was about Life Church got brought it up. And I said, well, let's study. Let's see what Life Church teaches, and let's see what the Bible teaches. And if the individual really wants to know what the Bible teaches, he can see it, he can obey it, and he'll see clearly that Life Church doesn't teach it. Or any of the denominations around here. I'm not saying that to be hateful, but they're not teaching what the Bible says. And I want to be pure from the blood of all men, meaning I want to show you the truth with proof, and you can either accept it or not. And I even will want to give you my phone number, so if you are on the fence, like, you know what? I go to New Hope Baptist in Gainesboro, and Randy's the mayor. He's a really nice guy, and they feed a lot of people. And yeah, he says you don't have to be baptized. He's a nice guy. But, you know, Travis is really showing some things from the Bible, and I think I just want to study with him more. See, I love you enough to give you my phone number where you can call me after the show and we can just talk and read the scriptures together. And if you love the Lord, I hope you obey what the Bible says more than your pastor. And so I want us to all think of that. Will we be pure from the blood of all men? Will we be able to say that to, con to people in our congregation? What about this? How hard is it to talk about the Bible? Well, tonight you're on Truth With Proof, and you can call in. I've had people call in in the past. It's been a minute since I've been on. Let me see how many people. i got to check the chat, too. I have a lot live chat going on. There's several people in the chat, about 13 in the chat. So, Nick, how you been? Beautiful White Cat. You should name your rename it to Beautiful White Dog. Because I like dogs better. I'm just, see, that's a matter of opinion. All right? That was a joke. Don't get all mad. Don't block me. Don't unfriend me. Yeah, the audio play. Uh, you're talking about the song, I hope. Oh, my speaking is fine. Okay, good. So, that's Paul May's intro. And, uh, okay, well, the intro. Elmer from Texas. Wow. Exactly well said. Sadly, I have heard this. Yeah. Good evening. Funny how Calvinists are always the... Yeah. They're always the chosen one, right? I'm a little behind on the chat. That's going to be a good interview. Uh, if it goes through, Lord willing. Yes, it is very sad. It's sad that... but it And, and, and the thing is, J.S. Brown, some people will say what I said is is a gossip. No, it's public news. It's out there. They actually stream their Bible studies and sermons online so everybody can see it. And so, yes, uh, that's not gossip. And uh, if that's gossip, then all the letters that Paul wrote warning individuals, and he even mentioned names and stuff, this is real life, you know? This is real life. And sadly, when you deal with humans, it is going to happen, you know. But that's why we can, we can actually be open about this stuff and get it out there. Well, there was another Christian who called, and we were in a disagreement, and I said some things to him that was kind of, I shouldn't have said. And we apologized to one another on the air. 
we made up on that point. All right? That's the way it should happen. All right? How hard is it to talk about the Bible? Well, it is very difficult. It is very difficult. That's the question I want to ask you. Christians, members of the Church of Christ, how hard is it to talk about the Bible? You know how I got that Bible study set up if he follows through with it? I need to text him in a minute. Um, we were talking about the Bible. Me and another brother were talking about the Bible. They overheard us start talking about will we know each other in heaven. And then asked me what I thought about Life Church, and I said, let's open the Bible and see. How hard is it to talk? We talk about all kinds of different things, don't we? We talk about the UT Vols. We talk about March Madness. We talk about all kinds of stuff. But do we talk about the Bible? We say it's the greatest book ever. The greatest sold book ever. You know, denominational people sometimes get us on that in the Lord's Church. They talk about the Bible more than us. I tell you why. You want me to tell you why? You want me to tell you why it's hard? This is what I'm pretty positive. This is why it's hard. This is why it's very difficult. Because in the Lord's Church, we say, most of us hopefully practice it, we say that we need to give book, chapter, and verse for what is said. Denominations just say whatever their feelings are. And so when you have a discussion with someone, it can be difficult because they're just going to speak opinions and you want to give book, chapter, and verse. And that could be difficult. And then, deep down inside, you're a member of the church, you know this verse right here. You know it. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. You know that. See, members of the Church of Christ, you can read that and you can see that, that Christ is the Savior of the body. What are you, what are you getting at, Travis? What's the body? We all know Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. We know where it's going. One, two, many clicks. Look at this right here. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And he had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Look at that. The church, which is the body, he's the savior of the body, so he's the savior of the church. And so when we start talking about the Bible, sometimes we can be like, oh, what's it going to be brought up? What's going to be brought up? How are these people going to react? And that's why we get in them in a Bible study and let them read the Bible like this program is set up. That's why I love this program. You can see it for yourselves. And you say, what is Travis meaning by the church, which is the body? Are you saying, Travis, that the church is the body? No, Paul is saying that. Paul says the church, which is the body, and he's the savior of the body, the conclusion that old country boy like me can think is Jesus is only going to save his church. His church. And you may say, well, all of these denominations are his church. They're not even teaching the plan of salvation right. See how that works? And we know from Ephesians 4 that the body is one. There's one body, so there's one church. Ephesians 4, there is one body, 4, 5, 4, 4. See, there's one, just one. We all know what that is. And so that's why sometimes it can be difficult to talk to people. But hey, do we love them? Do we love them? We got to come from it. Let's not talk to them about fighting and arguing. Let's present the Bible to them in a fashion where they can see it and then choose and still be nice to them, right? So what is the whole, the whole council? When Paul declared he's going to preach the whole council, gospel preachers, they say that most I hope many do, but sometimes when you do and you even you preach sound lessons out of little reference books, some congregations won't ask you to come back. That's okay. Because those elders and those members will have to answer to the Lord. And I'll have to answer to the Lord. And that's fine. They can keep saying and preaching the same old lessons over and over, you know, and and pay Big name preachers to come and tell you the stuff that you heard last Sunday. Why don't the big name preachers preach on stuff that is more deeper like church discipline, 
marriage, divorce. When's the last time you heard really gospel sermons on that stuff? Very few preachers will preach on it. What about this? Why don't we have someone really smart come and preach on this particular subject right here that I mentioned this morning, the body of Moses? What is that? The body of Moses. Is that referring to his literal body? Or is this referring to the body of Moses in the sense that it's like the body of the church, the group of people, which this would be Israel? And did the devil always try to get the faithful to sin? I mean, why don't we do that at some of these big gospel meetings? Well, because some individuals don't want to, as we say, rock the boat. And what's going to happen on the day of judgment is you're not going to be in the boat. You're going to already be out of the boat because you're leaving the doctrine of Christ. And I hate to tell this, but some individuals think just because you have baptism, right, everything else is forget. Forget everything else. Don't worry about nothing else as long as you teach baptism. And maybe I presented that, but there's a lot other doctrine within the doctrine of Christ, friends. And how do you want to always just stay on the simple things? I want Travis to answer the question, why is a Christian, why is Christian church baptism not accepted by God? I would say hello to my brothers, Clint and Nick and the rest of my brethren there. Okay, why is, he's talking about the Christian church, the ones that use musical instruments. Now some brethren, Bell, will say, that the Christian church baptism is okay. They will say, see, they were taught that they were baptized for the remission of sins. I don't agree with that. And I'm sure not going to teach that and put someone's soul in jeopardy telling them that they have been baptized for the remission of sins and placed in the Christian church. See, let me, let me explain why. Well, one thing is... Peter says to repent, all right? You repent first, okay? Why don't we baptize little babies? Because there's a condition, repentance. Repent, all right? The Christian church individual, did he repent of his vain worship? Let me look, wait, hold that argument as well. So you repent and you're baptized, everyone in you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. So did he repent and then... This is my argument number one. Now, you can agree or disagree. I'm just not going to teach it, and I'm not going to put someone else's soul online and my own soul. I think the safer thing to do is teach what the Bible teaches, that baptism does a couple other things. Okay? So, for by one spirit are you baptized into one body. Look, this is water baptism. All right? For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So it is the teaching of the spirit that we're water baptized. For by one spirit, when you look at the context, it's referring to the miraculous gifts is the, is the next chapter over. Look, for by one spirit are you water baptized into what? One body. All right? So you're in the body. The body's the church. Was it the Christian church? So there is other information that I'm lack of knowledge on the Christian church that I need to study further out because I don't know everything. But I do know they don't worship right. And there's some other things, like I said, that I've had to study further. Uh, so I don't believe that you're placed in the body in the Christian church. And then when we go down to Acts 2, and there's brothers around here. They, they teach it that it is okay, you're fine. Well, I believe the safer position and what the Bible teaches on these arguments that I presented that the Lord added to the church daily, okay, such as should be saved. So are you saying the Christian church is the church of the Bible? I don't believe it is. And so that would be my answer on that. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that they may have in common with us, with the Lord's church. It's not. They are immersed based upon their confession that Jesus is the Christ for the remission of sins. The Christian church is? I don't know. 
I've been a member of several congregations over 30 years and have been blessed to be a member of the congregation that are not afraid of hard topics. Good for you, Clint. It's good to see you, man. I ain't seen you in her. Well, I, no, I don't see you, see you, but, you know, get to hear from you in the chat. You have to interview the elders or leaders. Well, Bella agreed. And, well, you know, a lot of brethren, I can't help what other brethren do. I can only tell you that baptism isn't just solely, it does different things, and it adds you to the Lord's church. And I just don't see the Christian church being the Lord's church within their teachings. All right? Some will say, well, they're added to the church when they're uh, officially converted, but to me, they're converted wrong. But either way, be safe, right? You only got one. So how hard is it to be fully immersed again in water? It's not that difficult. And you can see the churches of Christ, the description plainly right here in the New Testament. Don't you want to be a member of that? I mean, just simply be a member of the church of Christ. And so when we get back here to teaching about, you know, the whole council, the whole council, man, it'll get you in trouble. Some places it will, you know. Look, the whole council, well, salvation. That guy, Chad, commented on my Facebook. He, I thought about, what am I going, if he calls in, what am I going to say to him? I'm going to say, how is a person saved? Does he even see if he even teaches salvation right, you know? What about worship? Do you have to worship God in spirit and in truth? Or what about living? See, this is the whole counsel of God. Congregations allow people to shack up, to live in adultery. They're not teaching the whole counsel. They're not, they're not doing it. In some places, their preachers are not going to do it because they're going to get fired and they're not going to have no money to buy groceries for their family. Sadly, we live in 2024. I mean, we, we are in a time where men are marrying men and people identify as kitty cats. Do you think the church is really, as far as many places, super strong in the sound of the faith that is willing to actually offend someone by teaching the gospel? No, they're going to say, Travis, you always want to fight. No, I am set for the defense of the gospel. I love you enough to tell you that two men cannot marry. And I love you enough to tell you how to become a Christian, that you got to worship right, and you got to live according to the New Testament. So yeah, congregations in some places will not stand for the whole counsel of God. And guess what? I hate that. It's sad. They're my brothers in Christ. And they're going to die in sin because they're ashamed of the gospel of Christ. But I'm a watchman. I'm going to warn them on truth with proof. I'm going to tell them I love them enough to tell you these things. And again, the great purpose. Shannon, appreciate you coming in. Not sure if 1 Corinthians 12, 13 is water baptism. Well, we could simply go and look at it again. And how, how would we come to this conclusion? This is the way. I want you to follow with me. How would you know? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13 is water baptism. This is, this is how you would know, okay? And so it says, for by, for. This word, I'm pretty positive it's garb. Since, since I don't know everything, and some people do think I know everything, as they act like on my Facebook, that I'm going to pull this up and we're going to look to see if that word is gar because that will help us a little bit in reading it. So it is. You see it. G-A-R. All right? It's not ace. That means basically, as we would see, gar is because. One of the meanings right here is because. And so when we go back and we say for or because, for, as the body is one, and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Same word right there. All right? It's the same word in verse 13. Gar, because. 
because by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Okay? By, so we're baptized. For by, because of by one spirit, because of the teaching of the spirit, because by one spirit are we all baptized. Well, this is how we come to that conclusion, Shannon. How many baptisms in the New Testament by the time the apostle Paul wrote Ephesians? How many baptisms? Now, you can answer it or not. We all know if you watch the program or you study, we know there's one. By the time the Apostle Paul wrote Ephesians, there was one baptism for the unity, for the church, for individuals. There's one baptism. All right? Now, how can you obey being baptized in water versus waiting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come out on you? How, how are you going to obey that, Shannon? Which baptism have you had? Have you had the one baptism that is for the remission of sins in water? Or are you just telling people that you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and no scripture reference to prove it besides a 1 Corinthians 12, 13 that you're contradicting other scriptures and you even forget the conversion accounts. Look at this. Look at this. And as they went on their way, they came into certain uh, Holy Spirit, and the eunuch said, See, here is Holy Spirit. What does hinder me to be baptized? We know it don't say that. I'm not being that mean. It's water, friends. They didn't have the New Testament. The early Christians did not have the complete New Testament, and the Spirit was re revealing this information. Hey, Nick, how you been? Good evening, Travis. Good to hear you, your voice. Uh, I've been in and out a little bit, so thanks for taking my call real quick. Just real quick on a comment on the baptism that was listed there to the Church of Corinth. We've got to keep it in context of that, and you would have to go back and find their conversion. Before we find their conversion story in Acts 18, right. Christmas and Gaius, you'd also have to understand that, that Holy Spirit baptism was never a command. It was always a promise. And it was a promise that was given to specific individuals in John 14, 26, 15, 26, and then John 16, 13. So by the time that that baptism that is being referred to there is spoken of, uh, water baptism for the remission of sins is what it is actually making reference to. And the example there is given in, in as far as their conversion story in Acts 18. That was not Holy Spirit baptism given to that church. Right. Sounds good. I got it up here on the screen for everyone. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking my call, brother. Good to hear your voice. Uh, great to talk to you. I hope you all stay, take care, stay blessed, have a great night. You too. See you, brother. Thank you. And see, um, he brought up a good point that I should have brought up, but didn't come to my mind at that moment. Was the conversion account, all right? The Corinthians were converted like this, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. They were baptized. This is water baptism in Acts. Read, I mean, commentaries, all commentaries. This, this is bat, water baptism all through the book of Acts, just about everywhere you see it, about, all right? And say everywhere. Some of y'all just waiting. Oh, did he say everywhere? Oh, I got him right here. Time stamp, one hour and five minutes. He said it. Look, this right here is water baptism. And then when we see they did not have the complete New Testament, that the Spirit did the teaching in the first century, not like Bobby's getting up at Life Church and these guys ain't even following the Bible, my friends. When you see these individuals in the New Testament were being taught by the script by the Holy Spirit. Uh, let me pull it up here. First Corinthians, I believe it's two seventeen. Look here. No, not even a verse seventeen. Let's see here. 
1 Corinthians 2.13. A little close, but which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teach, but with the Holy Ghost teacheth. Did the Holy Ghost teach? Yeah. What did he teach? 1 Corinthians 12, 13. He taught them to be baptized. It is revelation from God. Well, the men taught it, but the men got the revelation from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They are inspired men. So we see that as well. So I hope that helps. But if you think you can do miracles and you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you can always call me and let me record you doing these miracles like they did in the New Testament. And you're not going to be able to do that. All right. Let's keep going here. So I want to teach you the whole, whole, you know, whole counsel of God. Look at this. The religious teachers dare not suppress any divine message no matter what may be the consequences. Does that happen today? In, in, the, in the Lord's church, we're talking about, see, Paul's talking about the churches of Christ when he's talking to those elders in here in Acts 20. What about the Lord's church? You know, have you thought of that? Why do we have gospel meetings where they tell us the parables of the sower and not the hard stuff? Hey, you're on Truth with Proof. Thanks for watching. Thanks for calling. Hi, this is Brent Job. Hey, Brent. I had, I had said I would call you, and so I am. Oh, I appreciate And you did. I was wondering if you was going to. Well, yeah. I called, and I recognized some of the people in the comments section. Clint Little and uh, uh, the barbecue cooking. Yeah, that sounds like. I don't like... see his name up there. I don't see his name. Head to tail barbecue cooking. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, do you know those individuals? I know them from their comments. Oh, I got you. Okay, not personally. Oh, from from possibly other sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we had we had talked a little bit on the text messages, and um, appreciate you calling and taking your time out to willing to uh, just call someone that you really don't know a lot about and be willing to talk to them about the Bible. I mean, I do appreciate that. Well, I'm I'm glad to do it. Uh, I have to be over at the clinic at eight thirty central, so I don't really have very long. But uh, I believe the passage that uh, was under consideration was Acts two twenty. Uh, excuse me, Acts two forty. Yeah, I have it pulled uh, up here. Yeah. So what it is, is uh, this individual had commented on my YouTube, I'm just saying this for the viewers, and he had commented, and he was actually, I'm pretty sure, right, caller, that you had uh, you had commented to, towards somebody else, but I misunderstood it. I think that's how we started talking. Is that right? Yeah. And so that happens yeah. a lot. You know, that's probably not going to happen on the phone call conversation unless I put three people on there, and that's just too much to have three people talking. That's why I like the call in part. But we were going to talk about Acts 2.40. It says, in many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. So what's your thoughts about that verse, and what was you going to uh, talk about, about it? I think that that verse uh, refers to, uh, Did I lose you? Do you have me on hold? What in the world? It says... On hold, but I don't have him on hold. Maybe he has me on hold. If you're watching this on the YouTube, uh, go ahead and um, switch back over. I'll just do this. I'm going to hang up on him. 
and then I'm going to call him right back. It'd just be easier instead of waiting around. Hello? So I don't know what happened. All I looked down and it said that I was on hold or you were on hold. So I was calling you back. So you were just about to explain Acts 240. Yeah, I think that Acts 240 is taking a loan. Uh, I think that the key to it is save yourself from this crooked or perverse or untoward generation. Save yourself from the faith that this generation is facing. And I believe it has to do with the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple, more so than it does with pardon or forgiveness. He had just gone over the terms of pardon two verses earlier. Yeah, I'm I'm still listening. You cut out for a second. Okay. Uh, he had just earlier told them the terms of pardon and uh, then exhorted them again. I don't know what he said, what more he could have said uh, as far as pardon goes. But then he follows it with save yourselves from this crooked or perverse generation. Okay. And so you believe Not, that that is referring to the destruction of the temple that they would be saved from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that has more of a, of a reference to that. Now do, now, now, do you ascribe that what is... Do you believe that water baptism is required and you still hold this view, or do you would you say that you don't believe that water baptism is required? Oh, yes, I believe it's required. Okay, all right. And required unto the remission of sins. Is the... Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, the... it's, it's, simply, it's simply that phrase, save yourselves. Save yourself. Okay. When uh now how would they how would they save themselves from the destruction of the temple? If this is referring to AD seventy, how would they save themselves? I'm just curious what you would think about that. I say they would save themselves from being involved in that by following the, the Signs given in Matthew 24. Okay. So basically, they would need to apply the teachings of Matthew, especially the early part up to, I believe, verse 36 about taking heed to the warnings and flee to the mountains and getting out of Jerusalem, and that would save themselves. Pray that their flight's not on the Sabbath. Right. Woe to them with nursing babies. Uh, all of that stuff refers to the fall of Jerusalem. And uh, uh, so they would save themselves in a sense. Well, what, from, let me ask you this. In, in far as salvation, like how we are saved in salvation, do you believe that Mankind has a part that we must act upon with faith. Did I lose you? No. Okay. No. Think it, thinking about it because of the way you worded it. Well, I can uh, I can reword it. Do you believe that mankind has a responsibility? Does mankind have a condition or a Part or however you know in being saved. Yes, I believe that that uh, 
the best taste itself is defined as trust in Christ as the Messiah conjoined with or melded with or amalgamated with obedience. In other words, that's the biblical faith. Okay. Uh, and I'm not alone in thinking that. Uh, that's exactly how Dr. Thayer is lexicon. I gotcha. Uh, so based on that particular definition, then a person would be saved by faith only. Now, if somebody wants to trust some half-baked Baptist preacher and let him do the defining, then no, it would be not by faith only. Right. Well, it all depends on how you define faith and that's correct and 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 the trusting i've learned the best way to put it as in i i trust in what jesus did and what jesus said to do i trust that and so if jesus said for me to take a red crayon and color my nose red to be saved i'm going to do that and i trust jesus of course. But yeah. he didn't say to color my nose red. <laughs> no, no, but he did say to repent and be baptized. Right, yeah, you get my point. And people, people listening, they can get that. They understand. And Jesus never said that we're saved by faith alone. And James says that's a dead faith. Yeah, but James is, is, is using a different definition of faith. You know, that word has oh, half a dozen different definitions. Well, the, uh, it can. The, the, the context can help determine, you know, of, of what kind of faith is being considered, you know. That's true. You have to, you, you have to look at the context of it. Uh, if you look at Ephesians, two, eight, and nine, then I would say that it's uh, trust, confidence that Jesus is the Messiah conjoined with obedience because those same Ephesians that he's writing to yep. had been baptized some of them twice uh, in Acts 19. Yeah. And uh, so that verse is of no help to them at all uh, if they're going to use it against, you know, I don't know baptism in that verse. Yes, there is. Yeah, there is. It's in Acts 19. Yeah, following Christ in the chat says, your definition of faith is too long. Well, he doesn't like Greek lexicon, it sounds like. He likes probably his Baptist uh, preacher's definition. Well, a Baptist preacher will just tell you they trust, belief. Well, I've had him call in, and they the, he said you have to trust in what Jesus did, and I said, well, do you have to trust in what Jesus said to do? And he said, well, yeah, sure. And I said, well, Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Was you? Was you uh, baptized to be saved? And he says, no. Well, that's not trusting. No, and you know that particular passage is mistranslated, Mark 16, 16. What? Those are mistranslated in the King James. Well, what translation uh, is right? I've not heard of this, maybe, or maybe I have. Uh, those are Pastor Aris participle. The main sentence is, he shall be saved. And put in between there is to Aris participle. Having believed and having been baptized, that would be the correct translation. He, comma, having believed and having been baptized, comma, shall be saved. That would be 
be a literal translation. Well, what are, what are you using? I'm just, are you using a, like a Greek New Testament translation, or I'm just curious where I can, you know, look it up myself. Actually, I'm using Ray Summers' handbook of uh, Greek grammar, and he was a Baptist. Okay, well, I'll I'll study into that. I'm not going to disagree or agree with you on that. You know, I'm, maybe you've studied it. I hope you're right. I have studied it. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I don't know why they translate it present tense in the King James. If you look at a literal translation, go to Bible Hub and look at a little a literal translation. It will say having believed and having been baptized. But all that does is strengthen it. It strengthens the verse. Now you said what? What is present tense? You said they put it in present tense. Believe it would be present tense. Yeah, simple present, and that's not what it is in the Greek. It's not simple present. It's an aorist part. Well, I have it pulled up here, and it says it's aorist active participle. That's what I just said. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you're saying that you're saying they use the English. Yeah, they use the instead of using the English past participle, which is what an aorist participle is. Uh, they they changed it to believe it. Whoever believe it. Now, now, would you think that every time aorist is used in the Greek, is it past tense? Yes. Okay. Well, I ha I do have uh, some information. I won't, I'll talk about that later. But uh, have you heard of, what did I do with that? Let me get up here and look for this book real quick. But I'm not going to spend the whole time looking for a book. I'll bring it back up. But. It's a book about Greek grammar, and I want to think his last name is Black. Um, well, anyways, he has a note in there that sometimes it isn't always. So, I, I, my point is sometimes with these Greek scholars, it's uh, depends on maybe what Greek scholar you you read and talk talk to. I mean that you read and study, maybe you know. Well. I don't want to get off on the Greek, but we, I'll bring this back up and look into that, okay? Uh, the Greek, uh, uh, generally, there's an exception to every rule. Right, uh, right, right. That's, that's, just, that's kind of what I meant, sir, yeah. Uh, but in general, yes, the aorist is past tense. And a, a, a participle would end in I-G. And so it, it's that's that's a correct translation of Mark sixteen six. Uh, and I have kept you long enough on here. Yeah, that's fine. I do appreciate you. I want to elaborate a little bit on uh, uh, of your view of Acts two forty. If you, later on, if you're if you have to go, that's fine. You can watch it. Um, I do respectfully disagree with your view on that, but uh, I do appreciate you do calling and presenting your view. And I think when you tie in Matthew 24, it's not to me. It's not a ridiculous view, uh, but um, it's not the first time I've heard it. But the person who has presented it to me basically did not believe water baptism was required, but you said you did. So that's why I was kind of a little bit off on it. Well, the key to it to me, as I said, is first of all, the word save yourself. Right, right. Yep. Save yourself from what? I mean, he just told them two verses earlier how to save themselves from sin. Mm -hmm. Their sin. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'm then sorry. he said, after that, he says, from this scolios, uh, 
generation. Not the next generation, mm -hmm. or the generation after this one, after that one, mm -hmm. but this. How long? How long is a generation? Would you say? Uh, Forty years is what I've always believed. I, I'm pretty sure I agree with you on that. Yeah. And uh, you know, if not, you know, time, go ahead. From uh, from the time that Jesus said that, uh, up until the beginning of the march of the Romans was about 35 years, uh, maybe 37, but uh, the destruction of Jerusalem probably was closer to 40, and uh, so, yeah, I believe that the word save yourself, certainly that's the only time that phrase is used in the Bible, referring to, if it refers to, from your sin. Uh, and then the part about from this crooked or perverse generation. Uh, he didn't say from your sins. And so that's that's why I would tend to believe that that's at least part of the meaning of it. Okay. All right. I'm going to elaborate. I do appreciate you calling. All right. You have a good. I hope everything goes good. Uh, where you said you're going to the to the clinic. Be safe. Okay. I have to go sew up a dog. So. What was that last part? I I said, I've got to go sew up a dog. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, good luck to that. All right. Yeah, I'll need it. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was interesting, that last part. I'm assuming, I hope he's, a, I guess, a veterinarian if he's going to sew up a dog. Uh, if not, I guess we might need to be praying for the dog, too. But uh, look at this here. Oh, did, it, did I move it? Oh, man, I just had that pulled up. I thought this went good with it. Let me find it. We're going to elaborate on that. Uh, here we are. Mark eight thirty five. Look, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. When we're looking at this word save and save yourself, I, I want to elaborate a little bit on that. All right? I agree with the caller. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as the Lord, many as the Lord our God shall call. Look, and with many other words, look, and he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves. Do you know what was going to save save?" these individuals, part of it, was these words, the message. See, the gospel, Romans 1, 16, is the power of God unto save. He preached them the gospel. Within the gospel, there was conditions to repent and be baptized. That's in the words. And there was other words about testifying, exhorting, encouraging, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. And like someone put in the chat, the generation is referring to those ones, the crooked, wicked ones who crucified the Son of God, who were guilty of his death and what they had done. And he's saying, basically, don't be part of that generation. Don't be part of those Jews who put to death the Messiah. But you can be forgiven. See, can you be forgiven of adultery? Yes. Can you be forgiven of false teaching? Yes. Can you be forgiven from sin? Yes. And that's the point here. Save yourselves. It is not that you are coming up with some a scheme to do your own salvation because, look, then they that gladly received the word were baptized. Today, how do you save yourself? I've heard preachers say, you can't save yourself. 
the, the exact phrase is you can't save yourself by yourself. You can respond to the gospel. So in that fashion, you can save yourself by humbling yourself to what God says. Here, then they that gladly received his word, those were the individuals. Save yourselves. Save yourselves. Who? The ones that gladly received the word. Like here, we got following Christ in the chat. He has bad arguments. Really bad arguments. He's not going to call in. He's just going to stay. They're going to stay in the chat. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he says he isn't. But I believe he, he defends the Baptist doctrine. And so, again, he stays in the chat. He writes out a lot of stuff in the chat about Walter Scott. I guess he thinks uh, Peter right here is Walter Scott. He says, okay, when you have obeyed the message, the Jews that killed Christ, did you receive the Holy Ghost? Not like them in the first century because there's no apostles, all right, that lay hands on. Is the caller a COC member? What is it? Is the caller a Christian? Is he a member of the church? See, this is following Christ, and he's not following Christ. You know, I can say that I'm a Ninja Turtle, and I'm not a Ninja Turtle. This guy, his name is following Christ, and Peter followed Christ. All right, Peter said, save yourselves. How do you do that? You receive the word. And those that received the word, you know what? They were saved by faith only. That's what following Christ would say. These individuals in the chat, I love them so much. I appreciate them being here. But these individuals need to humble themselves. And he will not at this moment. God saved my soul. You're not saved, dude. You ain't, you ain't done what the Bible said. That's what the Bible teaches. I'm not God, but you have not submitted to his word. All right? How do I know that? Well, look. 1 John 4, 1. All right? Beloved, believe not every spirit. Do you think I believe you just because you put following Christ on there? That's the problem with Joseph Smith. They believe him. They People just believe in all kinds of spirit. This guy gets in the chat. I love his soul, but he has not rendered obedience to God. All right? He's in a man-made church, and he won't repent. He's very, very stubborn. All right. In my hand, no something you bring, I didn't save my soul. God did. Well, you're not even right with God. You're still in your sins. Travis, when you said pray for him and the dog, my wife was drinking coffee and it went shooting out of her nose. Well, I'm glad she's drinking coffee at, late at night because I thought I was the only one that might like sometimes drink coffee late at night. Sorry, tell your wife I apologize about that. And that sometimes that's where Jane talks about our mouth and our, is our tongue. We need to control it. And I just thought of that. All right. Campbell, Stone, and Scott would be honored. Well, I'm glad you praised those men. It's funny how these denominations come on and they talk about uh, individuals who have died long ago, but there is a person alive who has a phone right here waiting for following Christ to call in. And I want to ask you, how did you become a Christian? And what was you baptized for? And you know he won't call because he will not give you a book, chapter, and verse. And it's not we're not out to convert this individual, but the viewers. See, there's about 15 other people watching this, and hopefully more later, that will see that this guy goes to the Baptist church and he will not call and give me the verse where we're saved by faith only. And you guys are believing it. And you think I'm arrogant? You guys are believing stuff that's not in the Bible? You believe I'm mean? I'm on here like telling you to call in, get your preacher, come on the show. Let's just be calm. I disagree, disagree with that other guy. I do not believe at all that's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem within the context of the verses prior and after, I believe it is referring to save yourselves means gladly receive the word, the gospel message, obey it. And those that gladly received the word were baptized. They obeyed the gospel, and Christ added them to the church 
of Christ. It's where the saved are in Acts 2.47. Interesting call about the Greek. I want to look into that as well. He stole his water. He stole his water gospel doctrine. Oh, me. Oh, that's right. That's the individual. Look at the, these guys. It's crazy how this works out. You know, I want to be a watchman. We've been on a while. But look at this right here. This guy. Where is he at? This is the mindset of some of these individuals. Look what these uh, people on YouTube, they say, Timothy, this guy Timothy, he said, you're a, you're, you teach false doctrine. You reject Christ because I'm talking about Robert Breaker. Robert Breaker ain't going to call in. He won't debate. See, these little uh, followers are the ones that comment. The preachers just hide. They do the same thing in Jackson County. The denominations, you have sometimes a member will step up and, you know, I've had them call me and hang up, say some things. But the preachers just hide. You know, they'll say things like, Breaker is right. Robert Breaker. That's who they're defending. That's what you get with YouTube. Look at this guy. He goes, it's not required. This guy here up here, water baptism is not required. Jesus and Nicodemus were talking, and Nicodemus didn't understand what it meant to be born again. To be born of water, water means spirit. Did you see that? Water means spirit. Are you telling me this guy, the Holy Spirit, and the translators have enough sense to look at the Greek and write the word water? Why didn't they write the word spirit? And this guy just twists it when he says the water means spirit. Really? I thought water meant water. Well, I guess in real life, I guess you as an individual can just change words however you want. And you can go around and maybe you can shoot a squirrel and call it a deer. See? Squirrel means deer. Or you can uh, go and order you a burger and you can just change it change the definition and say that you're eating a taco. That's what denominational people do with the Word of God, and that's what they can do in the real world, but they think it's silly when you say things in the real world. I'm going to close out with this, unless we get another call. I'm going to close out with this. Ezekiel, all right, it says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land of the people of the land, take a man of their coast and set them for their watchman. That's the name of the lesson. I'm a, are you a watchman? Are you a watcher? Are you just sitting back watching, critiquing everything Travis does say or what he doesn't say? Or are you warning people that are in sin? If when, the see, when they see the sword cometh on the land, Christians, they ain't seeing no sword coming. Men marrying men, women marrying women. They ain't worried about it. They just worried about going to dodgeball and all of these other activities. They're not worried about sin. And warn the people, look, when, when, then, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, do you hear the trumpet? And taketh not a warning. If the sword come and take away, take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He that heard the sound of the trumpet and looked not, and took not, sorry, the warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh the warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trump. You see that? That's the main text. But if the watchman see the sword come and bloweth not the trump. You know what Travis does on Truth with, Flute, Truth with Proof? I am blowing the trumpet. These denominations in all these counties are not teaching the doctrine of Christ. I'm blowing the trumpet. I'm putting my phone number out there. I'm wanting you to call and set up a Bible study. And I will drive to your house and be polite. And look, you don't have to agree. We can be friends. But I'm going to give you the Bible. You can read it. You can obey it. And you can become a Christian. That's what I'm doing. I'm blowing the trumpet. I remember one time I heard this lesson at a congregation I attended before I began preaching. It fired me up. I was excited. wanted to blow the trumpet. And look here, and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them. He is taken into iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand, my friends. I heard this lesson. Look at this. So thou, O son of man, if thou doest not speak to warn the wicked from his way. Do we, as Christians, do we warn the wicked? How do you warn people if you can't talk about the sin that they're doing? You can't warn them. 
It's impossible, man. It's impossible. All right? And I heard a good sermon about this. I mean, I was fired up. I thought we was going to go door knock and evangelize. You know what we did? We went rogue go-karts. How are you going to preach a sermon like this and not go evangelize in some way and talk to the lost? How are we warning them? Every Lord's Day, we preach to Christians and we're not warning the wicked unless there's unfaithful Christians there or a couple that maybe hasn't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the majority are Christian. My friends, truth with proof is trying to warn people. I love your soul. I am not perfect. Neither are you. I am trying my best to get the word out. I'm trying to do it in a fashion where you don't have to agree. You can call in. You can speak your argumentation. You can make a stand for what you believe. 99% of sermons that you heard today are one-way conversations. The preacher is telling you exactly what he believes, and you don't get no say-so. Truth with proof, you get to say-so. You can speak. Now, many people speak their opinion, but on truth with proof, I'm going to ask you, where is that in the Bible? And see, the viewers who watch this, I hope you love the Word of God, and you want a Bible answer. You want book, chapter, and verse for the reason you believe, my friends. And I hope that is the individuals that we are seeking today. So I appreciate you guys for joining in with me tonight. I hope everyone has a safe week. Lord willing, look for the link. I will be back on next Sunday night, 7 p.m. Appreciate you guys, and have a good night. We really care what the Bible says. We want you to prove all things. You can call in and ask a question on truth.